three of the smash course, which is all about the half smash. Now before we get started on today's half smash focus, which is gonna be the forehand half smash down the line, I wanna tell you about my first encounter with the half smash. Now as I've mentioned before, I spent a long time living and training, playing professionally in Denmark. And in my first season over in Denmark, I was playing at the same club as some of the superstars. I mean, it was just crazy for me to be playing on the same team as Peter Gade and Camilla Martin. And I mean, Camilla Martin, I grew up with posters of her on my wall. So this was like amazing to be playing at the same club with her and getting to practice with her a lot. And I remember playing her in practice and she got me over and over on this half smash shot that every time I was backing up, expecting her full power smash, which was also a great shot. But, and so finally I was so frustrated, I went to my own Danish coach there and said, I need to learn that shot because I'm tired of having it, watching it go down onto my side of the court. I want to do the same to somebody else. So I don't know if my half smash ever got to be quite as good as former world champion Camilla Martins, but at least I really understood the technique of it. And that's what I'm sharing with you now. So the forehand half smash shot is a great shot to hit in combination with a power smash. And as I mentioned in the earlier sessions of this module, we want to combine the power smash with the half smash for many reasons. One, as a variation, so that we don't let our opponent get too comfortable in the rhythm of our offense. It's kind of like when you're building up your offense, it's almost like playing the drums. You don't want your opponent to follow the same beats. Ba, 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 ba. Because once your opponent gets into your beat, then they can move to your rhythm and then they're not struggling. But when you're building up the offense in the right way, then you're combining your arsenal of shots in a way like a drum beat that's very unrhythmic. So it wouldn't be ba, ba, ba. It would be more like ba, 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 ba. So that it's like a surprise. All the shots that are coming to your opponent, they don't know what's coming next and you get them off balance. That's the key to a great offense play. So the half smash is a really smart variation to the power smash because it changes up that rhythm. And it does that by making the shuttle drop closer to the net than the power smash would. So if your opponent is waiting for the power smash, then instead you dish up the half smash and now they might be caught on their heels and having to be laid on the shot. So for the forehand half smash straight down the line, or onto the straight half of the court, we're going to be using the reinforced panhandle grip. So we'll recall from last session, now you're the expert of both the reinforced V grip and the reinforced panhandle grip, right? Good. So for this shot, we're reinforcing the panhandle, which means turning from the original and base V grip, turning the racket head slightly to the left, like we were turning a door handle to the left, and now we've got that slightly reinforced panhandle grip. It's not totally panhandle, we never wanna use that unless we're frying up our onions. On the badminton court, there's just slight marginal differences. So we've got our slightly reinforced panhandle grip ready to go. Keeping a loose grip, we're gonna come back, get our energy pushing down. Don't forget about the spider pushes to get that surge of energy and keep the hula hoop going. Pushing down, coming back to the side, opening up the hips, coming back with the bow and arrow, pulling back, pointing the racket upwards to the approaching shuttle. With a loose grip, I'm still maintaining that reinforced pen handle, 
Now as I come through, rotating up with my elbow, pronating forward, and now with that pronation and the reinforced panhandle, I'm gonna connect with the shot with a slightly out-facing racket head. And what that's gonna do is connect with the shuttle on the left side of the feathers here, and then I'm gonna follow through. As soon as I've connected with the shuttle, I'm gonna go back and relax my grip and follow through the same way as I would for the power smash. So I've got my loose grip, slightly reinforced panhandle. I come back through, connect with the shuttle. All the surge of power goes into that one point of impact, which is now on the side of the feathers and the cork. And then immediately after, I connect with the shuttle, I follow through forward and then release the pressure and let the racket fall naturally down across to my non-racket leg. Let's see some in slow-mo. Back and down. Now the last thing to note about this straight half smash shot when it comes to the technical breakdown is where on the racket head and the strings you want to connect with this shot. For a full power smash, as well as the stick smash, we want to connect with the shot in the sweet spot of the racket. Now that sweet spot, if I imagine the racket is a face, then that sweet spot is about where between my eyes. So that's in the upper half of the racket head, right in the middle. So a good way to test is if you're breaking your strings, it should be worn out more in that sweet spot because that's where you want to connect with the majority of your shots on the badminton court. When it comes to the half smashes, however, that's where we play with that sweet spot contact point a little bit and variate it a little more onto the right side and a little more onto the left side, depending on which shot we're hitting. For the forehand straight half smash, that contact point is gonna be slightly to our right side. So that would mean if we're hitting it, again, using the face metaphor, we're hitting it more over our right eyebrow rather than right between our eyes. And the reason for that is that's gonna allow for our racket to connect more as we turn here, hitting the cork there, we'll hit the feathers as well over into the sweet spot of the racket head and the strings. Now we've been talking and talking about this half smash, let's actually see some in action. So as I've talked about, the difference between the full power smash and the half smash is the slice that we put onto the shuttle so that it drops down in front of the opponent. We swing just as hard and that adds a lot of deception because our opponent sees us winding up and the racket speed is as high as the full power smash. But by contacting the shuttle in a slice direction, that makes the bird drop about two feet in front of where it normally would. So it will land approximately in the same area as the stick smash on the court, but now it's coming with a slice, which makes it a lot more difficult to control for your opponent. Let's see Bobby hit some. So you'll notice that the flight of the shuttle on this shot actually slows down. And that's the deception that comes from Bobby doing a full speed swing and then the shuttle is moving slower, which is a great tempo change shot. 
So that's what the half smash looks like from the forehand side straight down the line. One thing I didn't mention yet is the deception factor of the half smash. We talked about setting our opponent back onto their heels because the swing looks so similar to the full power smash. And the only thing different is that slight grip change, which then cuts the shuttle and makes it drop down. But there's another really important part of the half smash deception. And that comes from not only making the swing look like the power smash, but making it look like the power smash that is going to the opposite side of your opponent's court. So that means from the forehand side, I want my straight half smash to look like the cross court power smash. And that is why we use the slightly reinforced pan handle grip here. Because we want, if you watch me in slow motion, I'm coming from here and around. As I come through with my elbow and pronate, it looks like I'm going to come through cross court. That's how my body should be facing, coming through the shot as if I'm gonna be hitting my cross court power smash. So I'm coming across, up, and as we recall from the power smash module, the steering wheel is what makes the shot go cross court, as well as our follow through going across. So now we're gonna keep that same direction with our forearm and elbow thinking about the cross court shot, but now with our reinforced panhandle grip, we're now going to bring the shuttle straight because instead of connecting on the cork and sending this down cross court, we're connecting more on the feathers with the cork, bringing the shuttle down straight. And that's where you get that added level of deception because my opponent is then going to be expecting the cross court smash and instead I surprise them with the straight half smash. Let's see a few more. So that's what the forehand half smash straight looks like. Now it's time for your assignment, time for you to get on the court and try some for yourself. So with your training partner, who preferably is also following this course, but if not, you can just ask them, explain to them what you're working on. Don't tell them too much because it's, they need to find out for themselves, but get them to serve up to you into your forehand side and practice, just practice the straight half smash. Don't worry about the target at all. At first, just get the sensation of putting that slightly reinforced pan handle and then hitting through the shot. Now, it's up to you when you want to think about that grip. When we're learning the shot, it's important that we understand before we hit it, when we're practicing, we change that grip and be aware of it before we're hitting the shot. As this becomes more comfortable to you, and for professional level players, they don't think beforehand what shot they're hitting. They change that grip positioning already when sometimes even as they're coming through. If they notice their opponents moving or anticipating a certain shot, they might actually at the last second change their grip and adjust their shot selection. But we're not quite there yet. For now, I want you to take your time in between, 
line up that grip, keep it loose, and then practice coming through and adding the pressure on the grip, squeezing only at the point of impact, and then following down. I want you to do five sets of 10 shots. So getting your training partner to serve you up five times, quite high. Give yourself time for this shot to get underneath it. For the first five sets, I don't want you to try jumping. Just keep your feet on the ground, get the sensation of this shot. Watch where it's landing. Don't worry about the target, just look where it's landing. You'll probably notice at first that a lot of them are gonna be going out to the side. Now one way to solve that problem is to not reinforce the panhandle too much. Because if you reinforce it too much, that's when you can really be hitting way out the side. So play around with it, make sure it's just a slight adjustment. So five times 10 shots with keeping your feet on the ground and taking breaks in between each shot for a couple seconds to let yourself see the target and make any necessary adjustments. Then for the second five sets of 10 shots, I want you to go a little bit faster and here's where you can challenge yourself trying to go off of either the one-legged jump or if you're really ambitious and feeling advanced, off of the two-foot jump. That's gonna be the maximum deception because that's where it looks the most offensive, like the power smash. And then you add in that slice and then it forces the shuttle to drop and fool your opponent. Another common error that can happen as well as hitting out can be hitting this shot too flat. So be aware when you connect with the shuttle, you don't wanna have your steering wheel strings too flat because that's gonna mean that the shot will bounce directly back. If you're having angle issues and it's coming up too flat, then that means your contact point has to get over top of the shuttle this way. Still doing all the things we talked about with the grip and the contact point on the right side slightly of the sweet spot, but just adjusting that contact angle of the racket so that you come more up and over the shuttle, sending it steeper down. Likewise, if it's coming too steep, then that means that you might need to adjust the angle upwards to make sure that it passes over the net. So that's your assignment. Five times 10, slower, watching this shot. And then five sets of 10, trying to jump and get as much speed as you can in the swing. So you really feel like it's giving the same perception to your opponent as your power smash. So that's your assignment for this session. Looking forward to next session, where we're gonna do the forehand side cross court half smash. Until then, step your game up. <laughs>